Hey y'all. Okay. Um, I want to go ahead and I want to get this shit over with because the reality of the situation is this when it comes to my ex. I have been very quiet. I have been very diplomatic. I have been very uh, closed off really about what happened between us and what he did to me. And it was not for his sake, trust me. Because at the end of the day, uh, he is deserving of no kind of mercy or covering up or anything like that as far as our relationship ending. What it was about was the fact that I was so humiliated. I was so embarrassed uh, of myself. I was so ashamed of myself and ashamed of what I allowed him to do to me and to put me through. Now, I can only take responsibility for my actions in the relationship. And what I did was I was cooking, I was cleaning, I was washing clothes, I was motivating, I was financing. I was praying, I was pushing forward of every positive thing that this man tried to do. Now, to say that I was an angel would be a bit much because I'm not an angel and I've never been an angel. But one thing I did not do, I did not have sex with any other men. I did not touch any other men. I did not kiss any other men. I did not exchange phone numbers in public places and actively pursue relationships with other men. Okay, what I have so-called been found guilty of doing when I was in a relationship with him was maybe flirting with another man or maybe accepting a compliment from another man. But understand this, when you're in a house with somebody 24-7, not 24-7, but when you're in the house, you're living with someone in a relationship and they're constantly telling you you're ugly, you're fat, you're disgusting. You're gross. Ain't no other man gonna want you. I don't want you. You nasty. Da 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 da. And you ain't never had them kind of problems with yourself. You never had those kind of esteem problems. Because it's called self-esteem for a reason. It's esteem of your motherfucking self. And I've always had good self-esteem when it came to just me as an individual. And not just that. Me as a big woman, I never had low self-esteem. It's never been an issue of mine, okay? God bless y'all that deal with that shit every day. But the reality is this. I ain't never had a problem getting whatever man I wanted whenever I wanted. Him. That's all it is to it. Okay? I love I, when I was in my 20s, I used, it used to be a thrill for me to get with a nigga that said he don't like big girls. Because by the time I was through with him, he didn't just like big girls. He loved this one. Okay? So, at the end of the day, that wasn't my problem. But if I'm coming out the house with that, then of course you the only nigga in the world that think I'm ugly. You the only nigga in the world that think I'm disgusting and all this and that. The third, even people who don't have no appreciation for people that are big can't call me ugly. Because there's nothing ugly about me on the outside, but most importantly, there's not no ugliness about me on the inside. The heart of me is pure and true. Now, I kept my mouth shut because of that reason. I was ashamed. But here it goes. Because... I, months and months and months later, I get pulled in to one of his schemes that he used on me for him to use on his new girlfriend. And I know this scheme because he used it on me. The scheme of my ex is trying to holler back at me. But I'm going to tell her off in front of you so that you know that I ain't that kind of nigga. I'm a faithful, true kind of nigga. He put the exact same scheme on me. If I go back far enough, I could probably pull up the inboxes of when he did the exact same scheme to me. He has a forte. And one thing, if you never said nothing about the devil that was positive about the devil, I'm sorry. And it might be wrong to say, but the devil had perfect timing. Okay? The devil knows when to sin and knows when to try to get in. Okay, and that's all it was when I got in a relationship with him. So here it goes. Okay, 
All the right combinations of buttons have finally been pushed. Even though I'm doing whatever I want to do, I am successful. I have what I need. I have what I want. I've been in counseling for the longest over this. I'm finally trying to get over what was done to me. And honey, I've been dating since the get-go. But I ain't trying to be in no relationship with nobody because I don't feel safe enough to be in a relationship with nobody right now. Okay? But I'm engaged. Get me straight. Get me straight. Okay? Anyways, I digress. Because that'll be a whole nother video. Kevin Berrien beat my ass for two years of my life. Okay? Two years of my life. I was in a relationship with somebody that wasn't in a relationship with me. And I mean that wholeheartedly. I was 100% in a faithful, loyal, respectful, loving relationship with Kevin Ann for two years. But he wasn't in a relationship with me. That's the truth of the relationship. He did not ever love me. He did not ever care about me. He did not even like me as an individual. Okay? There was nothing about me that appealed to him physically. There was nothing about me that appealed to him emotionally. There was nothing about me that appealed to him spiritually. I was purely a way for him to get away from Valdosta after a young man got murdered there that he was close to. He felt like everything was about to pop off, so he reached out to me on Facebook. And we started talking. At that time, I had just came off having a hysterectomy, having cancer, and I felt very alone. I was very vulnerable and very lonely. I will admit that. And I took everything he said, and I fell for it. I went for it head over heels. I fell for all the bullshit. Bullshit that a seasoned chick like me should know better than to fall for. But I was in the right place at the right time to be squeezed and juiced by this nigga. Okay? He came down here to Panama City. And I don't want this video to be very long because at the end of the day, this is, this is, this is the first and the only something I'm going to say about this. So I'm going to tell the truth. My right hand. To God. I'm going to tell the truth. And if I have to tell the truth on myself, I will. Because I am done with this bullshit. I am done with this stupidity. The lies that have been told on me. The things that have been said about me are impeccably ridiculous. Okay? The intention of him coming down here was to stay with me a couple weeks. And then me and him get an apartment of our own. Because that's what I was going into. I was full gung-ho. Let me finally take a chance. Okay? We moved. When he moved down here, he stayed with me and my mother. Okay? Because I was living with my mother at the time. And it has never been a fact of my mother taking care of me. It's never been a fact of my mother paying bills for me. If you know me, you always knew that I always had a way to get money or a job or I made my own hustle. Whatever. He came down here with nothing. Not even a food stamp. Okay? Looking like a, a vagabond. Okay? But I was happy to see my baby. Okay? At first, I was so happy it was ridiculous. I was just like, oh my God, this man loves me. Like, he is crazy about me. He hugged me, kissed me, all this other shit. Talking to me all night long, praying with me, all kinds of stuff. So, I began to be molded and formed into a spot in the first time he hit me. It was an accident. He took the skin from under my eye and a big plug with the nail it was an accident it was an accident in his angle and then after that he accidentally hit me again another time it was an accident and then another time he hit he threw his phone at me and because a man hit me in my inbox and told me that he wanted to he wanted some of this pussy or he always wanted some of my pussy now if he had went back in the conversation he would have saw that I had told this particular man, I got a boyfriend. I'm not, don't disrespect me like that no more. Okay? This is somebody that I've known for years. Is He's, they're practically like family. 
okay? We move into our own place. Our own place. The reality of that is 100% of the money that was put into that place was my money. Okay? And if you know me, you know I don't take care of no niggas. I don't give to no niggas, no white boys, Spanish boys, no matter what boys. I don't give no money to no man, nor take care of no man. If you know me, you know that when I moved out with Kevin, that was the first time that I just all the way left home. So you know that it was something super serious for me. At that point, I got his name tattooed on my chest. Okay? Like a dumbass. But Scott will be back in town the end of this week. And Scott is going to cover it up. But anyway, I digress. The very next two or three days after getting his name tattooed on me, he hit me with so much fuss that he almost tore the K off. And thanks to Ambi and stuff, this cut right here was about this long. It shrunk. But he's, he scratched, he almost scratched the tattoo off my chest that I got his name. He consistently and constantly lied to me. Okay? Because he knew at some point, even if, let's say he came down here with a good intention. Okay? Let's, let's just, let's, let's go way in fairy tale land and say that he came down here with a good intention. At some point, he realized he didn't have no feelings for me. At some point, he realized, I don't even like this motherfucker. Okay? And if you're a church person listening to this, so be it. If you drink and you smoke, you a church person and you listen to this, so be it. I drink and smoke too. We on the same motherfucking level. So if I cuss and you don't cuss, sit your ass down somewhere and get the fuck out my face with all that, oh, you cussing. I'm grown. I do whatever I want to do. You take those up with God and I take mine up with him too. Because at the end of the day, I'm finally fucking fed up. Okay, he cheated on me time after time after time after time after time after time. I did not know that he was cheating on me like this. I had no idea he was cheating on me like this. At the end of the day, he must have been cheating on Saturday mornings when he say he would go in for a short shift at work. And he must have been cheating when he said he was staying late for a work. Because the truth of the matter is, he never had a job while he was here. He worked for labor. 